Director of Business Development for Bachem Americas. Today I'm going to be talking about a new service offering that Bachem has, which is the chemical glycosylation of peptides. Uh, this is offered in conjunction with a partner. They're called Glytech. They're located in Kyoto, Japan. Before getting into the specifics of glycosylation, I'll give a brief overview of the Bachem organization. Bachem has uh, really been the leader in peptides for the last four decades. We essentially pioneered the concept of the contract manufacturing of peptide APIs in Switzerland in 1971. Shortly thereafter, we produced the first therapeutic API. Since that time, we've grown to, be, grown to be a global company. We've been traded publicly on the Swiss Stock Exchange since 1998. We're nearing 1,000 employees worldwide, and we saw revenues of nearly 100 million Swiss francs in the first half of this year. So where do we make all of these peptides? Well, we have four GMP manufacturing sites in two different continents. There's two located in North America. Both are in California. There's two more GMP manufacturing sites in Europe, in Switzerland. In addition to the four GMP manufacturing sites, we also have sites dedicated to the synthesis of non-GMP or research grade peptides and to um, our catalog products and our Clinalpha service, which is sterile freeze-dried peptides. As a percentage of sales, a majority of our business does come from GMP-grade APIs. This consists of generic peptides and generic small molecules, albeit more peptides than small molecules. Uh, in addition to that, the development and manufacturing of NCEs, new chemical entities, which are in clinical development or uh, commercially approved but still under patent. Uh, in addition to that, we have our catalog products and our custom synthesis, which is non-GMP or research-grade synthesis. Uh, which is designed to support the, the earlier stages of peptide drug development. The glycosylation service is actually readily applicable to peptides in any stage of clinical development, be it early stage, preclinical, uh, or even uh, for generic peptides that are commercially approved. So with that, let's get into the impact that glycosylation can have on your peptide drug candidate. Simply put, Chemical glycosylation has the ability to improve PK and PD properties of your drug candidate. As far as physiochemical properties uh, go, you can see improvements in solubility, in stability, in half-life, and in homogeneity of the product. Now, the homogeneity part comes in by virtue of the fact that chemical glycosylation is selective, meaning you can selectively target the position of the glycosylation within the peptide, as well as specify the glycan that gets added to the peptide. This level of control is really what makes this technology, uh, I'd say, more powerful than, than the existing technology, um, and I will get into more of that on the next slide. So in addition to the PK properties, chemical glycosylation has also been shown to improve pharmacological properties, uh, including better binding, you can modify selector, s receptor selectivity, you can target a peptide for a certain tissue or organ, and you can improve overall drug tolerance. So I just wanted to get back to this idea of, of chemical synthesis being able to generate a homogeneous product. Uh, which is an improvement, I think, upon recombinant production, which is what I refer to as the more traditional uh, technology for doing this, which tends to produce a heterogeneous project. So uh, in order to better understand that, I'll just give you a, a brief overview of, of glycosylation. Typically, proteins and peptides are glycosylated on the side chain of an asparagine residue. Uh, this is called N-linked glycosylation. So when a cell sees a protein or a peptide, it has the ability to put that oligosaccharide on any of the asparagines that are present. Likewise, it has the ability to put really any glycan uh, in its repertoire on those asparagine residues. Now, you can engineer a cell line to produce or ideally produce one particular glycoform rather than a, a heterogeneous mixture of glycoforms. Although what we see is that you typically do not get a completely homogeneous product. Um, Amgen 
illustrated this with a nice study. Their process and product development group took their commercial product, which is epigen, which is recombinant human erythropoietin, and they compared that to purported copies of their drug coming from China, Korea, and India. So what you'd expect to see on that gel if it's all the same drug is the same pattern. What you see instead is a variation uh, in the glycosylation, different glycoforms and other impurities. Uh, they went on to show that the in vitro potency of those other drugs uh, relative to the labeled concentration indeed varied. So this just illustrates that, that these biochemical uh, discrepancies uh, can be had from different cell lines. So another interesting article was in Nature a few years back where they talked about uh, biosimilars coming onto the market of glycosylated proteins. And they went into the fact that because of the fact that these, these cell lines have the ability to produce different fingerprints of, of oligosaccharide patterns, you're going to have a difficult time making these biosimilars. They went on to give a nice example of the fact that even changing the equipment and making, using bigger pots for scale-up can also change the oligosaccharide fingerprint on a product. Uh, Genzyme tried to scale up their commercial product, approved process, Myozyme, uh, and was unable to do so because the FDA proved that sh or told them that they were seeing different patterns of oligosaccharides. So let me just get into a, an example of what kind of level of control you want to have on a peptide. If you want to get to a homogeneous mixture, what sorts of things would you like to be able to control? Take a, a protein or peptide here. Imagine that it has several asparagine residues. You'd want to be able to selectively glycosylate one of those versus the other, say, four. With that, you may want to incorporate more than one glycan. So in addition to just saying, I'd like to glycosylate here, maybe here, maybe just the top of the molecule. In addition to that, you want to be able to select which glycan is going on which position. When you're trying to decide these things, Bachem and Glytech can help with proprietary knowledge. Um, Glytech has their own research that they've done that can show certain glycans may be better for improving solubility. If you want to improve receptor selectivity, that might, uh, you might want to vary the position of that glycosylation. So that's kind of done in a partnership with, with the sponsor of the project. Uh, the field of glycobiology in general is, is rapidly expanding, and we're learning a lot of new things about what different glycosylation patterns can do to the PK and PD properties of peptide and protein drugs. So knowing that we want to be able to have total control of position, the number, and the structure of glycan, how is it that Bachem and Glytech can go about doing this? That really begins with Glytech's proprietary knowledge that has generated a human glycan library of over 50 different N-linked human glycans. So you can see here the glycans linked to asparagine residues or asparagine derivatives. Glytech is able to produce these building blocks uh, at the kilo scale. And again, the fact that we have these building blocks at our disposal is really where that control comes from uh, in solid phase and solution phase peptide synthesis. So recall we said that we wanted to be able to control the structure, the number, and the position of the glycans. Controlling the structure is as simple as picking the structure from the library, again, based on whatever knowledge you have or which properties you want to modulate. Uh, controlling the number and the position of the glycan glycans is more Bachem's domain. Uh, and we do that through solid phase synthesis and solution phase synthesis. So just as an example here, this is an FMOC or Bach protected glycan modified asparagine residue, literally a building block that can be used in, in solid phase peptide synthesis. So if you'd like to incorporate this building block, it's as simple as what you know to be solid phase peptide synthesis. Begin with a resin. You can put on your first amino acid. You can put on your second amino acid. And when you get to the point where you'd like to include one of the building blocks from the library, say that one, it's just another coupling reaction. And I, I'm oversimplifying it a bit with the cartoon. It's not just another coupling reaction. There's some, quite a bit of know-how that goes into a challenging coupling 
such as this with, uh, with a building block of that complexity. But I want to point out that it is just a linear peptide synthesis. So obviously you can keep going. You can choose to incorporate regular asparagine residues that are not derivatized. You can incorporate asparagine residues with varied glycan. So you get total control of the position uh, and number of the glycans. One other neat fact about this technology is that if you had a peptide that did not have any inherent asparagine residues, you may still want to glycosylate it. It still gives the benefits uh, of the p potential PK and PD benefits. So you'd like a building block that can be used to modify existing side chains with reactivity such as a cysteine uh, or a lysine residue. And Glytech has those building blocks uh, as well. Shown here would be a, an iodoacetamide-derived, uh, asparagine-derived glycan building block where you could take a native cysteine reaction and in solution react that building block to give yourself a glycosylated peptide. You may have a bioactive peptide that has no uh, intrinsic functional groups that can react with, uh, with these building blocks. So you want to insert one um, that allows you to do a, basically a positional, say, cysteine scan uh, where you're looking at the optimal position to include that cysteine, which will eventually have a glycan on there. In so doing, you can generate an entire library of glycosylated peptides for screening. So as a proof of concept of this technology, Bachem and Glytek embarked on the chemical synthesis of interferon beta-1A. Interferon beta-1A is a 166 amino acid peptide with a glycosyl group on asparagine 80. It's an approved drug substance to treat multiple sclerosis with a market of about $4 billion. There's three recombinant products on the market now, uh, which are mixtures of at least 10 different glycoforms. So the chemical synthesis of just a 166 mer uh, in itself is, is a challenging feat for, for solid phase peptide synthesis. To selectively glycosylate it is, is quite a pioneering effort and, and we did it and it was recognized by the industry as, as a pretty impressive feat. So briefly what was done was three fragments were selected. One of those fragments uh, included the glycosylated asparagine building block. Um, the synthesis of each one of those fragments was, was optimized and scaled up as was the ligation steps, the, the deprotection steps, the folding to generate uh, a fully chemically synthesized interferon beta-1A with selective glycosylation at asparagine 80 and, and notably from a process that's amendable to industrial scale uh, and it has cost-effective or cost-competitive manufacturing. So just some data on that chemically synthesized product. What you're seeing here in the gel in lanes one, two, and three, that's the synthetic product. Lane four is the commercial product, and as you can see, it's got some additional glycoforms. But what happens as far as bioactivity with the synthetic product, what you can see appears to be improved in vivo anti-tumor activity for our synthetic over our commercial product. Now, when it comes to PK properties, both IV and sub-Q, what we see is, is comparable uh, PK properties. However, Glytech has some collaborations with academic uh, labs in Japan, and they have shown other interferon beta analogs that, uh, that have shown improved PK properties. In addition to that, with some of their collaborators, they have improved the PK properties of other well-known peptides such as GLP-1 and somatostatin. And in those cases, at least uh, in order of magnitude improvement on, on half-life. So now that we have seen a little bit about how it works in terms of synthesis, why you'd potentially be interested in, in glycosylation, I just wanted to wrap up with uh, an explanation of how we see the partnership working out, how you go about interacting with us in order to, to look at these glycosylated peptides. So it's a fairly simple process. We start with a three-way CDA. The sponsor shares with Bachem and Glytek the PK and PD properties that they're seeing and explains what they'd like to improve. Something as simple as uh, dissuading an aspartamid formation or modifying receptor selectivity or both. With that information, Glytek uses their proprietary knowledge in conjunction with Bachem's synthetic knowledge to generate three to five analogs for screening. Those are made by Glytek at about the 10 milligram scale. 
If the results are positive, that could lead to a licensing agreement with Glytech. It also could lead to another round of screening to, to improve the analogs. Once the candidate has been decided and is ready for clinical development, that's where Bachem comes in with our expertise uh, in GMP and large-scale manufacturing uh, and scale-up. So I'll conclude here by saying that this basically a pioneering partnership between Bachem and Glytech uh, focused on the chemical development and manufacturing of glycosylated peptides. Uh, again, a reason why we're interested in chemically glycosylated peptides is because you can improve the biological activity of a peptide uh, and you can, uh, you can increase the, the amendability of that process to commercialization by the fact that it's a homogeneous product. Um, Bachem's contribution to the partnership is our proven expertise to scale up and manufacture at the kilo scale while Glytech's contribution is their diverse Glycan library. So with that, just want to say thanks again and uh, wish everybody a successful CPHI.